Hello, welcome to studio. Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing in this now moment with myself and with Jess Maitre and one another. Um, Jess will be joining me in just a moment just to do a little um, talk about life. <laughs> uh, from one healer labeled as a healer to another labeled healer, light worker, um, being human, working together um, and creating this beautiful space that we all live in together. And uh, Jess is the creator of Yothera Method, which is um, a beautiful method um, with yoga, yoga therapy, um, movement, energy work, uh, all kinds of beautiful things. So we're gonna just get on here in just a moment. I think she just popped on. So I will pause this for just a moment. I'm gonna let her in and we'll, we'll play from there. So thanks for tuning in. Okay, we're back. So Jess is with us now and has joined us. And um, I Jess, I kind of already gave a little intro about you and we kind of chatted a little bit earlier about us just kind of organically going into flow. We do have some real life things we wanna talk about Hopefully we have time at the end. And quite frankly, if we don't, whatever organically comes through is what we should be talking about. And we can have these conversations um, later if we need to. And I also wanted to kind of play with that because I, earlier I was like, what is real life? <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that really mean? Yeah, totally. <laughs> So and I was going to just maybe let you kind of start, um, which would be kind of fun and just see what you feel guided to talk about. We kind of were talking about the week and maybe what all of us have experienced. I feel like it's been all over the place, but there's yeah. been a few themes. Yeah, for me, um, one of the themes that's shown up is how quickly we're clearing. So what I've what I've noticed is when I, something comes up in my field and I'll get, I'll maybe get triggered or something like that, I'll almost be able to identify almost immediately what that wound is or what that old program is, if you will. And then almost just by seeing, it's like, it's done, it's over. And there's, I don't even have to, you know, like go do the things that I normally would do, like journal about it or go see see somebody for it or whatever it's just been it's been so incredible how fast things are clearing at least for yeah me. yeah mm -hmm. that's great mm -hmm. um me yes and no yeah right yeah it's, it's like yeah. <laughs> it's I, I hope my internet doesn't go out by the way i keep getting these flashes and i did one of these i mean we might just be blown it out with our energy who knows um this happens sometimes but um yeah i Feel, I, I was just talking about this because I did a video in my car and I was talking about the same thing that you just said. Mine has been what would have taken like six months or three months or a week. So whatever would have taken a week to clear is taking maybe 10 minutes <laughs> or what. But so it's not for me, it's not necessarily all of some of it is immediate. Like I'll have the thought I'll recognize that's why I'm triggered and then it's gone. And I don't even really have a moment to ponder it. It's just like exactly what you were talking about. But on the flip side, I've had more deeply embedded things that I didn't even realize were there. And I did have to dig a little bit like, oh, this is interesting. Why am I thinking about this? What am I feeling right now? Why am I crying? Whereas usually I would just cry and be like, whatever, I'm just clearing something. I don't have to know about it. This was more of a... Um, other traumas that I mean, you know, from family or thought patterns for myself that were habitual, like deeply embedded habitual where I went, I didn't realize I even felt a lack around that particular subject. And it was like this big aha. And then as soon as I just, as soon as I uh, realized that that's what it was, I kind of watched the thread unravel into all these different other places and see where it was attached to. Yeah, because it's all connected. It's like, yeah. yeah, I've noticed that too. It's like one, it's like unraveling the sweater. <laughs> yeah. <whole> thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, whoa. And then it's, and then it's kind of like, I can't believe I've been carrying that around for so long. <laughs> so, How have I been functioning? <laughs> yeah. And a lot of it isn't 
ours. Like nothing's yeah. really ours, right? But you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just somebody else's or yeah. Totally. Something we might've taken on as a habit pattern that we learned from our parents or uh, from a TV show that we watched all the time. I mean, we don't realize how that mapping system is so powerful at a young age. Totally. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So um, what do you think? Did you want to go into a little inflow like message or? Sure. You know, just Okay, cool. Yeah, we haven't we're... played this way before. We're excited. I mean, we played this way, but not really. <laughs> Yeah. On a video like this. This will be fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just speak to what I'm noticing right away is that I'm getting this um, visual that a lot of people right now are feeling this inner struggle to um, travel or like come out like I'm seeing this like springtime of people wanting to bloom and blossom and come out um, and then at the same time are feeling this struggle of still feeling um, like like they can't yeah yeah. Ooh, so that's fun to kind of talk about. I've seen that very much. So um, some people are feeling very, um, it's causing a bit of depression and they don't realize it. Yeah. They're feeling trapped. They're feeling like they can't see, like, you know, it's funny. I was just having a conversation this week, how I would love to see the pyramids of Egypt, but now I'm really going to have to wait, <laughs> you know, kind of like, things like that. And I want to actually, I'm really glad that you brought that up because from a very esoteric standpoint, and you know, this, we've talked about this before. One of the things that I've learned is it's, that's why it's even more important now to go into meditation and you can intentionally connect with those places mm -hmm. and either by through a picture, like in a national geographic magazine. And I know it's nothing compared to what you're, you're what you're able to experience while you're there but sometimes it is. <laughs> totally. And, yeah. you know, so for myself, I've been, because oftentimes we're drawn to travel to certain places that we've already felt a connection to because we've been there before or we're there. I'm, I know I just went like super time traveler, <laughs> like, you know, multidimensional, but we are multidimensional beings. And so we can connect to that through our imagination through physical touch to pictures through holding certain crystals and setting that intention to anchor to that particular place and it can be very powerful but on a normal <laughs> what's normal mm -hmm. on another note yeah it's like we have this um desire to be connected to earth on a physical level whether it be man-made structures that are connected to earth or the redwood forest or seeing family and friends. And it's not, many people don't feel that they have the freedom and they don't temporarily that they, that they once had. Yes. And so wouldn't you say, I think that it's important to acknowledge that. Yes. I, and, I, mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's it. Yeah. I was just going to say that I like what you said about it's causing depression without people realizing that that's what's happening. I've seen a lot of that almost like, um, I'm getting super activated in my throat. Right yeah, now. I know. Me too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Oh God. Okay. Here it comes. Um, like they, there's a sense of, I feel sad. I feel depressed. I can't uh, but I better not share that because who am I to have a problem right now when the world is in such a chaotic state and everybody's having such, you know, harder issues than me. Mm -hmm. Like I sense a lot of like putting on a, a bold face, like putting on a, um, a good face right now. Yeah. And there is that sense of fake it till you make it sometimes, you know, smile and you do feel better, but there comes a point when you can only that it, if it doesn't become a point where it becomes real, you don't yeah. feel real, then it becomes a cover up. 
I'm actually being guided to go into some light language about this and a little flow, if that's okay. Love that. Yep. <clears throat> and this is not just about, I think this goes out, not just about travel. It's our natural innate desire to connect with mother earth and to connect with human beings. And that is, um, creating a stagnation in our senses. And this is a representation of so many things, not just that that's just one aspect to add to the layered aspects as to why are people are feeling a little down right now. You know, it's just another <laughs> seeing a hot fudge Sunday. It's just one more sprinkle on the hot fudge Sunday of <laughs> 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 of poopy feelings, right? So, um, and this is also like you just kind of went into five different aspects because it is not people feeling guilty for saying that or feeling that way. Um, then people who can't feel that they're stuck. So it's like so many versions of stuck, unable to speak, feeling guilty about speaking, and then feeling like they don't, oh, well, things are worse. So I shouldn't want this. Yeah. I mean, it's just so many different layers. Yeah. Um, and I think that some of the things we blow off as unimportant, it, they're important to us. Yeah. <laughs> they may not seem important in the grand scheme of things. And sometimes they aren't from one perspective. Um, if there's something more important going on in, in our personal lives that we should be focusing on. And when I say should be, I see that very loosely, like, mm -hmm. you know, it may be that by traveling, it helps us to focus on the important things and to regain our clarity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there is, you know, it's like not meditating for a while. It's like you start to, you know, anyways, I went off on a wing squirrel. <laughs> um, Oh, maybe we should maybe do a little work on kind of clearing that and um, also just kind of recognizing too that whatever it is that we're feeling is um, not to be ignored and it's not to be downplayed because in actuality, each person is their own creative source. And if they feel like their creativity is um, not being able to be sourced, they're not feeling resourceful, they're not being able to connect to that which makes them feel more expansive, then they come into this space of shutting down their frequency. And so it's important to, you know, how can we, um, how can we recognize that we're feeling this way if we don't acknowledge that we're feeling this way first, right? So maybe we could do a little, just a little clearing around that and set our intention to kind of also kind of pull through whatever other messages are, are wanting to come through. Did you want to continue or did you? Um, no, that, that sounds great. I'll go into it and I'll just drop the mic and send it, send it your way. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever you are, the land reaches out to touch you, to communicate with you. For you are the bearers of frequency of golden light that allows the light to flood into the senses. We invite you, light warriors, and this is a plan words I'm seeing. Namoku neash tamoku warriors of truth. We invite you to be the way of the light. This is all a play on words, for light is merely a form of communication. Light is merely a signal that we are signaling through our language and the interaction between Jess and I that is activating and allowing one another to flow within this frequency and all who tune in to perhaps play in these energy waves as well. The earth too holds these frequencies. And as you set your intention to connect with her, she brings it to you, so to speak. 
And while this may not be stimulating to the senses that you are used to being stimulated, such as the eyes, the smell, um, I'm seeing people feeling that feeling of being out in the fresh air, being on top of a mountain, it can further stimulate a deeper sensation in which we can connect to the elementals that are beyond what our five senses may sense. It allows us to establish a deeper connectivity with our other roots, our tiny fibers, our tiny frequency connectors that are allowing us to communicate um, on this unseen level, so to speak. Um, so I'm just seeing more people finding the ability to connect in with the little things like stop and smell the roses, <laughs> plant a rose bush on your back patio, get as many plants as you can around the house and with as many different types and, and, and from many different places that you can order and kind of make it, there's different solutions that are temporary solutions. And in doing so, this allows you to pull through your own creativity and your own resiliency, allay, allowing a sense, when I see resilience, I'm seeing like filaments and resilience and um, uh, connections to the, to the deeper um, communication that the earth is providing. Because um, one of the things we've been talking earlier about is how there's been a lot of energy coming in this week. So um, sometimes when we're locked in a depressed, a depressed, a depressed area, depressed down, um, pressed upon, we are unable to find that um, deeper frequency in which we can express and expand. And then that allows us to hear these other senses. Do you, that make sense? Like the elemental communication and beyond. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just, yeah. Oh, you're good. I'm flowing with you. Um, I was just seeing, I was seeing um, this deeper form of communication that's, that is happening. And it's, I kept seeing um, synchronicities, like yes. that being part of this deeper communication, which then brought me to this place of um, understanding that we have to connect with the unconscious mind, which is through the body and the senses. And that's how we connect earth and that's how we connect to these other realms and that's what we're being invited to um open to right now uh and then i also saw abundance like there's a lot of abundance something about like people not feeling supported and and longing for that um longing to feel supported by the earth um in this new way that's like almost like beyond money or just yeah. like a deeper support that's and, and that requires that deeper communication. Yeah. And deeper connection. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a deeper value system. It's That's going, good. you know, it's so funny that you said that because on my way here, um, I was kind of saying this in, you know, this, what you just said. And I'm laughing. I was laughing because I had just gotten finished saying, you know, if we're not listening and we're not hearing, what the messages that are coming through from the earth and from other, from our guides and from each other. And I was also thinking as, as we were kind of sitting in this energy about the fact that, because earlier I, we've been talking about, okay, how do we kind of work through this? And really it is with each other. It's playing with each other mm -hmm. and being, I mean, and I want to get to that in just a moment because I know you delve into the soul and the Akashic records and all that. And I want to just touch on that briefly, but I want to share, I said, we're going to miss the synchronicities. And right in front of me was a license plate that said golden heart. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <It's a slave. laughs> uh -huh. And I was like, okay, <laughs> for example, if only I could have, you know, shown that on like a, and I also recognize that like when we come together, one of the things that I do, and I know you do this too, is you're, we're able to then see and feel what our sisters and brothers are accessing. Absolutely. Yes. And we're <laughs> catalyzing for each other too and helping. I really feel we help each other clear things faster. Oh, like, for sure. Just by talking, just by having communication. Yes. 
Um, yes, some of the things you and I had been discussing earlier. And, um, you know, I want to share that too. One of the things that you did just was you started a group. I've had a couple of friends that have done that. I'm not much of a group starter, but my, thankfully my friends are, <laughs> which has helped me make other friends that are friends with them. Mm-hmm. And it really is because oftentimes we may not even, you know, sometimes we think we're going along and we're feeling just fine. And then we realize, oh, there's, there's something that's missing here. And, you know, one of you will say a certain word and it'll trigger, oh, that's what it is. That's what I was seeing the other day. I forgot about it. Or I remember when I experienced that three days ago. And not only does it help, then you feel like you're not crazy. Like we were talking about earlier, because we both went through it within, usually we, I find us going through it in like similar bubbles yeah. within a few weeks of each other, at least totally. Yep. of this whole group. And we're all doing this is my point, mm-hmm. but it's a matter of connecting with our soul tribes. So if you feel drawn, right, to reach out to somebody because they're, everything's very synchronistic and you find that there's a little group of people, it may be that that's part of your soul tribe, yep. you know? So don't be afraid to just say, Hey, I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Right. I think what, it takes a little bit of bravery, you know, just put yourself out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's part of that throat being able to, to say something without, um, you know, I don't know. I think that, um, a lot of people do are experiencing I mean, even if I've been working with people who are not necessarily aware of any of the things that you and I, or maybe some people watching this are aware of in the galactic or energy realms or Akashic realms or angelic, whatever it may be, but it's like, they know there's something and they know they're, and they're, they feel like they're missing it. And sometimes it just takes that one little click into place, right? That allows you to go, oh, maybe that's what I've been. And you'll feel it. It's like when, like you said, it helps us to process it faster and integrate it faster. All of a sudden, it just is like, I didn't even realize I was holding on to that, but you're right. And boom, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like we're also opening to like completely new pathways of reaching where, like our, reaching our goals, if you will. So I think a lot of people, including myself, have just been on this track. And you and I have talked about this, but just very focused on this is where life is going. This is how I'm finding stability. This is how I'm supported. And what, for whatever reason, some of those things right now are just not working anymore. And we're being almost forced to kind of become more open in our field with, okay, like what else, um, what else is here for me to say yes to? Yeah. yeah, I love that. What else is here for me to say yes to? That's mm-hmm. great. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And also, so the thing about it is, for example, we'll go back to what we started talking about with like the travel. You know, a lot of people that was their go to, right? For some people, their go to was, was, you know, hopping on in the car. In, hopping on a plane and going here or there to either forget about something, to learn about something new, to experience something new, but it could be something as simple as some places are still closed up. Yeah. So they can't, you know, necessarily go some, for some people it's going to a bar or restaurant for other people. It's so it really is. And I'm using very seemingly basic things, but again, it's that basic survival that mm-hmm. many people relied on totally. and now, like you said, it's like, it's no longer, this is the way I work through my life because my life is completely changed. <laughs> yep. And we can't really re- depend on, I mean, even travel right now is some places are open, but some aren't. And so it's harder to plan life. I think that's so divinely timed, honestly, <laughs> like we're meant to just be present with how it's unfolding. I feel yeah. like a new way. So yeah. I agree. Um, it's interesting because, um, it's challenge. Well, I could go into so many. I just went like 10 different subjects just from that one little branch, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's constant for 
for myself, it's constant restructuring because, but I mean, I, I, I say that like I'm constantly changing everything, but it's not like that. I mean, for me, where I'm at right now, it's only like that in like one day, <laughs> you know, like what you're talking about. Okay. Everything is out the window. I don't know what just happened. I got to regroup. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm not, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but sometimes when you're in it and there's some people that are in it a lot more frequently than they're used to being what I call in it because, and I'm sure you've seen this too. It's like job change, family change, relationship change, no travel, <laughs> everything. Everything just got obliterated. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. And that is um for those people who are experiencing that right now we we've all been there at some point in our i know you have jess yeah, i have too <laughs> yep. um many of us did this before all of this started happening i think so that we could help support others when their time came so to speak to experience this i think so too yeah and that's kind of i mean how we meet the people that we meet right because we reach out to one another because we're experiencing those things um so i would say that if that's something that something someone's going through and you've never had a massage go get a massage totally. <laughs> <laughs> you know if you've never gone to the beach and you can go go to the beach yeah. if you've never made a snowman make a snowman, you know, like stupid, whatever those mundane things are, go do it. Yeah. That actually reminds me of something else I was seeing as you were flowing. And, um, it was the children, like so many I, children coming in. I don't know if they're, it's actual like soul children or what that is, but there's some child energy that's also landing big time right now. That's teaching us how to play, teaching us how to, yeah. And like, all of my, like the clients that I'm working with this whole week, everyone's been, Hey, I, I like drew this picture and it looks like an eight-year-old drew it. I'm like, that's because the eight-year-old is here, you know, like they're stepping in and almost like teaching us how to be playful again in this. Yeah. Time. That is so important. And that is part of, yeah, exactly. That kind of ties together because sometimes we're like, I'm not going to do that. I've never done that before. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Would what now, would your eight-year-old do? <laughs> I actually was just thinking this morning, I have a swing set that's like, I have a park across the street. And I thought, okay. oh, this more, you know, I'm going to do my meditations in the morning and put like my headphones on and just go swing for my meditation. Yeah. Oh, cool. I love that. Right? <laughs> oh, cool. oh, yeah. That's a great <laughs> idea. You just gave me a great idea. I'd like to get one of those swinging chairs that you hang on the patio. Yes. Yeah, and it's fun. that's another example of being creative and sometimes being stuck forces us to think about those things. Like, mm -hmm. I never would have thought of that before. Not that that's where you're feeling, but you know, I'm using that as an example. Okay. Like, get out of the box mm -hmm. that we tend to put ourselves in. And like you said, everything used to be kind of like linear, right? Like it was like, okay, for myself, it's it, it tends to be, um, you know, get up, have coffee, right? Yeah. Write down my dreams if I remember them. Um, you know, a lot of people answer emails and things like that. Make sure that we, so I like I try to meditate, but I don't always, you know. But it's this kind of same thing every day, and a lot of people relied on that. Mm -hmm. And what I want to share on that note too is, as multi-dimensional beings. I, I've learned like when I, when I write stuff, for example, it's all over the place. Yeah. Not all of it follows like an eight year old. Oh, really? and my, yeah. yeah. And my, my, I call it my higher guidance team is like, yeah, kind of like you were telling your clients. Yes. You're welcome to this party, little eight year old child. That's awesome. Yeah. And my constant message that comes through is have fun with it because when I start to get serious and I start to go well, what does this mean I don't understand I I then block it from expanding expressing yes yes you know in true form yeah and that actually reminded me of 
I don't know why maybe my higher self just linked this, but what you just said um, <clears throat> could be a really awesome approach to um, the topic we were talking about earlier about the shot of the arm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're going to go there. All right. We're going to get real. Okay. We started off with the fluff, although I don't really think it's fluffy. I'm just kidding. I'm being, I'm trying to be light, lighthearted, golden hearted about it. Right. Oh, by the way, moving into that. Yes. And that actually does move into so much. Mm-hmm. So please. Yeah. So we're calling it the shot in the arm or yeah. the shot, whatever you want to call it. The arm shot, call it the long shot. <laughs> yeah, a long shot. Woo. I like that. That's going to be our, so I just want to give a disclaimer here. This is not something we were even hesitant to talk about this because it's not something that is really in my, it's not something that's in my area of expertise. We could say, oh, I got to pause this for just a moment. My dog's gone. Okay. So make sure this isn't frozen. Okay. So we had been noticing, I kind of got off track, I'm sorry, but um, the golden heart and the inner child and um, taking ourselves seriously. And somehow that transitioned to our uh, long shot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, the transition was um, just bringing maybe a different energy or more playfulness around the the shot in the arm um, as a way to, you know, be of assistance for some people that may not have an option. Yeah. So uh, the disclaimer was that I have, I'm very neutral about this. I believe that, um, believe <laughs> that every, I even play with that word. What is my belief around it? I'm very neutral. It's your choice. I don't agree or disagree because that would put a limit on my own. That's their journey. And we all make a choice um, to live our reality in a certain way. And some people truly believe that that is something that they need to do. And from one perspective, that is then what they truly believe they need to do. And so I'm not here to step on anyone's journey or to dictate my opinion about how someone else should manage their life choices. Having said that, my choice is not to participate in it in the long shot and the arm shot. However, what Jess and I have been talking about is, yeah, some people, nurses and doctors, they're required to have this done. And, you know, I work with clients who live in particular places that I've been working with for years, who some of them are older and some of them are, um, they require me to test regularly to make sure that I'm not carrying it when I come to see them. And that's a choice, you know, I don't even like necessarily inserting something for an object in my nose every week to verify to them. But in from one perspective, I am choosing to do that in order to continue to assist this person energetically through energy healing. And so, so to speak. And so we have noticed, Jess and I have both worked have worked with people who have received the shot in the arm. And I was reaching out to Jess about this because the energy around it is different. Mm -hmm. Some of the clients I've worked with for quite a few years and all of a sudden it felt different. I did talk about this briefly in a video saying, Hey, if you're a healer, it may feel a little goopy, but you had a really good word for it. Um, well, my, the word that came through for me, it felt a little bit muted. Yeah. 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 But as in their energy felt a bit muted. Yes. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. And again, this is, if we think about it, we are placing a foreign object inside of our body. So whether this is permanent or impermanent, it's, is, it is, I, I don't want to use the word irrelevant, but it is what it is. Mm-hmm. So it's going to hold a certain frequency in that person. And so we both are just sharing a couple of different perspectives from our own perspective. And again, whoever's watching this will have their own perspective. And so this, from my own journey, is about having an open heart and an open mind and being in a place of neutrality so that we can neutralize a lot of the opinions around this, because it is what it is. We are going to be meeting people um, 
that have had this or that um, may be getting this. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what the long-term effects will be. Maybe nothing. Maybe everybody will be feeling amazing. And that would be great, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. And I certainly choose to stay positive about it. Um, however, the relevancy is right now, these, these beautiful people are coming to us for balancing energy work, Akashic record reading, energy readings, whatever it might be. So when Jess, when you're tapping into the energy field, what have you felt and experienced? Would you like to go a little deeper into that? Sure. Yeah. The, um, you know, I've only seen maybe three or four people that have had it and the energy, the subtle energy that I've picked up on is it's harder for me to tap into the deeper layers of their their energy. Um, and it's harder for me to um, sense like when normally I would be picking up on their soul or their records, if you will, it's actually harder for me. I can, but there's a little bit of a blockage. And, and you know, again, I don't think that these individuals are necessarily um, aware that that's there. I think that they're saying, you know, I have symptoms. I feel, I don't feel super good. Some of them weren't feeling very good because there's some symptoms that come with getting it. Um, for some Yeah. People. And so I asked you just too. I reached out because I was feeling the same way. And yeah. I was like, you know, and as, as we're always uh, for myself, I'm always, I wouldn't say questioning myself, but we have those moments because we're changing and transitioning. So I know for you, your style and a lot of healers and, and light workers and individuals who work with these different modalities, it does shift and it does change. And at m moments it's heightened in some areas and lessened in other areas. And then it shifts again. That's how it works with me at least. Yeah. And so I thought is, and so I asked you, Jess, did you know that they'd had, because I knew, and I honestly was like, hmm, am I creating this? You know, you start to second guess yourself. You start to really question your abilities to connect on that deeper layer, which is not a bad thing, by the way. It's a good thing for us to always be asking ourselves, where are we coming from? You know, am I coming from preconceived ideas and concepts about what this would do to the body because of what I'm hearing about on the internet? And quite frankly, that could be possible. And I love the fact that with you, you didn't know, but you felt something was off. And then she proceeded yeah. to tell you. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that kind of just clarified it for me. It's like, okay, that's that's why it was so difficult because I normally I don't have any problems at all picking up on things. Yeah. Sidebar, when I work with someone who's got a lot of heavy metals mm. that I know right away. So that's a perfect example. I, I won't, they won't tell me oftentimes if I work with the person, I don't want to know, just let's leave it. Don't tell me what's going on. Let me get to the best. So I don't, I don't flavor it with my own judgments because we're all human. <laughs> and um, then, but I usually can feel and I sense, okay, there is a lot of mercury or lead or some type of heavy metal toxicity. And same thing with parasites. Like I can get this really strong mm -hmm. sense with parasites. And this is the same thing, but it's a completely different vibration. Yeah. It's like a new pattern in the field that I haven't experienced yet. And to me, it like the only word was muted. I was like, there's a yeah. new frequency. But yeah. it's nothing like I've experienced. It's the same feeling as when I pick up on people's traumas, like the, and where they're holding it in their body. It has a signature or a frequency. Yeah. And then this was like something totally new. Yeah. Can you give me an example of that? Because some people might be watching and go, what does she mean by signature? I know what you're saying. I know exactly uh, what you're talking about, but. Well, it's kind of like, um, for me, I experience it in my own body. So if I'm picking up on a trauma or um, energy that's held in someone's body that needs clearing, I will feel it in my own body Yeah. when I'm working with them and then, right. I'll, you know, be able to feel it. And so sometimes it feels like heaviness. Sometimes yeah. it's, I mean, that's really what it feels like. It just feels like dense and heavy. Correct. Yeah. That's how I feel with it too. And I was just curious and I, I was mulling it around in my head. I'm like, okay, I've got to, I've got to reach out. And this is a perfect example. If I would have just kept this, I mean, I would have worked through it and figured it out 
And I, I, you're just, all you're doing, all you did for me was um, confirm what I was experiencing as well, which I think is really important to have that interaction so that we can kind of work together and play off these things because this helps us help others and ourselves. <laughs> and um, for me, it felt, um, so I do this, I have the same thing, that feeling in the body sensation, but sometimes I'll see pictures. I think you do too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll hear exactly what it is. I'll hear intestines, you know, or whatever, or, it, or I'll have, so different, it depends on who I'm working with. And um, it's different for me every time, but I understand. So when you're, I fe felt the heavy as well, I think. And then I saw, I think I described it to you as it's heavy. I can't explain it other than it's heavy yet scattered. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> like, right? Yeah, it, it's, I don't have words for it either. It feels muted and, and a little like, sparkly not in a good way though <laughs> <laughs> I, okay I know. no ahead. I know what you're saying it picks I was thinking pixelated yeah so I had seen literally um this pixelation in their field of maybe static yeah that's it muted and static thank you muted. yeah yep. and so it literally felt where what would have taken maybe 15 20 minutes to kind of get in there and it took me the full hour mm -hmm. where finally I was just like, and a uh, sidebar, I actually changed because of that changed my, which is interesting talking about morphing and changing. I changed my pattern or habit or one, two, three because of it. Mm -hmm. And I stopped and I had a conversation with them. Oh, awesome because it shifted the frequency because I, I thought this needs to, we need to play with this a little bit because it's not the same animal. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for all you healers out there and, and Reiki practitioners and lightworkers, maybe nobody else will experience this. This might just be something that a few people experience and we're all on our own journey, but that's what it does feel like. Yeah. So and patience is key. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to add too that if you are picking up on it and you want to clear it and you want to assist somebody in clearing it, then getting their permission, obviously. <laughs> and then also just um, that I, I believe it can be. I believe it can absolutely be um, worked with. I don't think it's like, oh, no, it's there. And now we have to, work. it's always going to be this barrier. I don't really, I don't get that from it. Yeah, I love that too. I feel the same way. So I keep getting this message and I think it's maybe important to talk about this too because I keep getting this message that when, and I haven't put it together quite yet into written format, but basically we're building this barrier in our blood brain barrier. And I was seeing literally cells like blood cells. Mm -hmm. And as we expand in our field, as we raise our frequency and vibration, again, back to the golden heart, everything comes back to that, right? Um, that does not have the same effect on us that it does if we are not in that golden heart frequency. So it's almost like it creates the word that was coming through for me earlier was ooh, distilled. Mm -hmm. So we're distilling everything up. That was because we talked a little bit about what we felt this week, right? Or what I was experiencing this week, at least was like a lot of distillation, yeah. a lot of bubbles, a lot of heat, so that everything I was experiencing could be purified and by back to that golden mean. Yeah. Right. And so I was shown that we are essentially creating this frequency. And the question becomes, if this was created in a 3D and let's just get linear for a minute in a 3D reality, but we're in a fifth dimensional perspective, A, we probably won't have anything to do with it. B, if we do our, our, or our, um, like you said, forced to, so to speak, like we're required to because of our job or whatever it might be, it will not have the same effect. It'll be easier to clear, right? I, I think so, yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I've been seeing as well. Not to say that I'm going to run out and go sign up, but on the flip side, um, I do recognize because it's kind of scary for some people when they hear that a loved one 
you know, might have effects from it. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. So um, all of us are helping to counter that a little bit. And the counter isn't even the right word. We're doing the same thing that we were doing before. We're just working with a different energy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, did you want to go into a little bit more flow on anything else? I think that was pretty much, I mean, I don't feel like this is complicated. <laughs> no, yeah. I think this, I felt like what came through is feels complete for me. I mean, that was, yeah, I felt good. Yeah, cool. And I'm so glad we're bringing this up because there's a lot of topics that many of us are tiptoeing around. I don't really necessarily have a desire to talk about a lot of those topics, but at the same time, I certainly want to express them like what we talked about because it's happening. And then that's how we transmute them as well is we got to talk about it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And be able to express so that we can experience and share our experiences because this is, uh, I think there was this old, old reality, you know, the old paradigm was you know, everything was kept secret and you didn't share tools and all of that. Honestly, I've never been in that space, but I do see, I mean, I was kind of in that in between when I started getting into this, I did experience that a little bit. So let me rephrase that. I have experienced that, but on the flip side, I'm recognizing that that really is an, that old fearful place of people are going to think I'm weird. They're going to try to uh, do this or try to do that. And quite frankly, it's about us. Here you go. (laughs) Let's talk about it. That's the new way. (laughs) Authenticity. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. So um, we didn't really do much energy work around this. Do you want to do one last little segment and then close out? Like do a little energy work around it? What do you, how do you feel about that? Yeah, that'd be great. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. And anything you want to share, I mean, in your flow, do you want to start? Sure. Yeah. Um, The way that I was transmuting it earlier when you were in flow was I was um, imagining it being transmuted through kind of like a tree going into the earth, almost just like, um, yeah. So we can, I can guide through like a, my process. If you'd like. I love that. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Let's do that. And then anybody that wants to do this, that's listening. Yeah, this will be really powerful. So, yeah, I'm excited. Okay. Yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> Fun. <sighs> so, just taking some deeper breaths, and you can just let the exhales be a little bit longer. <sighs> and with the deeper inhales and the longer exhales, you can just begin to imagine a softening of the energy, softening of the muscles in your face. Softening of the jaw and the shoulders. With each exhale, just continue to move down the body in this way and just begin to soften all of the edges that feel tense or dense. So moving past the heart, the rib cage, the solar plexus, the whole torso. And the hips, the sacrum. Each exhale, you're softening an opening down the legs, and the feet, and in your mind's eye, you could imagine a grounding cord. And this grounding cord connects your body to the center of the earth. 
So using your exhales, these longer exhales begin to drop this grounding cord that's just uniquely for you. You can begin to notice the colors and the textures of this grounding cord. And it moves 500 feet down, all the way down to the center of the earth. And as your unique grounding cord reaches the center of the earth, you can imagine it kind of like tying off like an umbilical cord. It's connecting you, connecting your body, your energy to the center of the earth. And you can almost begin to feel it viscerally, begin to feel this connection as it ties off. And when that connection feels secure, you can continue to use your breath to inhale any codes or healing frequencies from the earth. You can inhale these up your grounding cord. All the way up into your energetic body, to your physical body. And you can almost imagine this healing frequency as golden light that's filling all parts of your body. So with each breath, you notice that you can inhale to fill more areas of your inner landscape. I'm just inviting this healing energy from the earth to come into all of the dark corners. You can breathe it into any areas that feel tight or dense. Each inhale, you're moving it up the body, up the inner landscape, and just breathing it into all the areas that feel like they need a little bit of this healing energy or attention today. So up through the torso and the rib cage, up into the heart. the arms and the hands, the shoulders. And the neck and the head. And once you reach the top of your head, you can just invite an opening here and allowing this opening to almost see this golden light being able to come down in through the top of your head and washing out anything that feels dense. You can imagine it washing all the way out down the grounding cord. can see this as water or golden light coming in through the top of your head and just washing out the inner landscape, taking anything with it that is not in resonance. 
with your true nature. You can use the exhales to just guide this washing out. You can guide it down your body, down the grounding cord. Back to the earth. And just do this a couple more times until you feel a little bit lighter. And when this feels complete, this washing out, you can just set your intention to continue to stay connected to the center of the earth, to stay grounded and just know that you can always come back to this place of grounding and using your grounding cord if you feel the need to. And whenever you'd like, you can open your eyes. <laughs> unmute myself. Um, that was beautiful, Jess. Thank you. You're welcome. That was I nice. Love that. <laughs> Whew. Um, I'm just going to pause just for a second. Yeah, so that was really powerful. Thank you, Jess. That was awesome. And um, I think just to kind of end on that note, we're all working together to kind of cleanse and purify and just kind of come back to oneness. And we're all gonna have little bumps along the road, uh, bumps in our arm, <laughs> stuff <laughs> up our noses, like all kinds of crazy things might happen, happen along the way. But ultimately these gifts and tools are, um, when we connect to source, we are these infinite beings and we have this stream the stream connectedness and everybody brings to the table their own uh, signature frequency, their own way of attuning to this and sharing it with one another. And I'm just really grateful for you, Jess, and how you, how you bring it. So thank you so much. That was so nice. Wow. So we're going to try to do this again soon. Yes. Hopefully we will not just try, we will do this again soon. <laughs> so I'll end on that note. If you want to stick out around just for a second, Jess, I'm going to say to everybody watching, thank you so much for tuning in and, and sharing in this now moment again, and, and just watching these all with an open heart and open mind. And thank you so much, Jess, for playing with us today and namaste. Namaste. <laughs>